Hello, welcome to the Tuesday, December 17th, 2019 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. If you ever shared a file online, you probably realized that whoever received this file can take it and reshare it. Apparently, cloud authorization company Polyrise considered this sort of a new and unwanted functionality in Slack and reported it as a security vulnerability. The problem Polyrise outlined is that once a file is shared in a private conversation, any member of that conversation can take the file, share it in a public channel, and with that, make it public. And this is not undone if the original owner unshares the file. If you unshare the file, you just remove it from the location where you shared it, which would be this private channel in this example. Slack pretty much uh, told Polyrise that, well, uh, this is just how it works on the internet and they're not really going uh, to fix this. I actually agree a little bit with Slack here in the sense that once you share a file with someone, they can download it, uh, they can add it to an email and send it away. So it's not that Slack is implementing some kind of DRM here or so to limit the distribution of these files beyond Slack. And sticking with the authorization topic here, Google announced a plan to turn off a password-based authentication for G Suite apps. If you do want to use an app in G Suite, you have to essentially switch to OAuth. Now, you do have a little bit of time here. It starts happening June 15th next year, so you have about, what is it, six months left to switch your applications. After that date, new users can no longer use any applications uh, to connect uh, via password-based authentication. Now, after February 15th, 2021, which is essentially a little bit more than a year from today, uh, then all LSAs, as Google calls them, as in less secure apps, will be turned off. So even starting June, you may see some issues if someone tries to use an application for the first time. So better get started on updating any applications uh, that you may be using. Overall, that's a good move. Uh, Google sort of getting more behind some of these more modern and stronger authentication standards. Yes, OAuth has some issues as well, uh, but uh, Google is actually pretty good in implementing and also educating developers about how to use OAuth. If you are a developer, I highly recommend Google's OAuth Playground, which allows you to sort of experiment with this authentication standard. But of course, if you're looking for a weak or non-existing authentication, then typically you're looking for Internet of Things style devices and home and small business routers. Latest example, TP-Link. The IBM X-Force researchers found an interesting vulnerability here, and Chris Orky Whippich did summarize these results in a blog post. Pretty interesting vulnerability here. You can change the admin password without authorization, so without authenticating anyway, just by setting the right refer header. Now, this is a classic uh, web application vulnerability to sort of rely on the refer header, but it's a little bit more complex here. If you change the password to a short password using this method, then the password is essentially just garbled and nobody can log in after that. But if you use a very long password, then the password is actually wiped out and you cannot, you can log in without any password. So the attacker would first send a request with the right refer header trying to set a very long password, which would in effect delete the password. Then the attacker can log in via, with no password and make whatever changes they would like, including like you know, setting a real password here. Another interesting issue they came across here is that yes, the passwords are encrypted, but they're not hashed apparently because there is a secret key 
that they found in the firmware that was able to decrypt the default passwords that were set in the device. And yes, no surprise here, the root password uh, was actually pretty weak, even though they don't show it in the blog post, at least I didn't spot it reading it. According to these researchers, uh, this affects the TP-Link Archer C5 version 4 routers. Now, uh, given that this is the one they tested, I wouldn't be surprised if there are other TP-Link devices that have exactly the same problem. TP-Link, of course, only updated this specific model. Now then we got one more IoT story, actually something that I mentioned, I think it was two years ago at the RSA keynote panel that we always have, and that's weak random number generators in IoT devices that lead to weak encryption keys. And some researchers looked at IoT RSA keys and they found that there are 435 thousands of them, at least that's what they found, that check their prime factors which makes them not too difficult to actually crack. Uh, they're saying it costs about $3,000 in compute time to compromise these keys essentially uh, by brute forcing them once you have uh, these prime factors. Well, that is it for today. Thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.